Hi, everybody. Welcome. Thanks for, for waiting. Um, if it's okay with everybody, just waiting one or two more minutes as people join us this evening. But we are very thankful for you being here and we're excited um, for the conversation that we will have today. Okay, so just to be mindful of time, um, and I'm pretty sure people will be coming in. Um, and so let's get started. Um, so welcome to um, today's Health Justice Futures event focused on the power of art for communities with disabilities and really understanding how art plays a role in supporting and sustaining the well-being of communities with disabilities and how can we think of ways to create communities of care. And today we're really excited because uh, we have our guest speaker, Cody Kelly, who is a visual artist from a community organization in Tucson, Arizona and um, he'll get a chance to share his work and speak about his experience um, with art. So let's continue. Is everybody good? Everybody's able to see my screen? Okay. So first of all, let me introduce myself. <laughs> You're probably thinking who's this stranger talking to me on my screen. So uh, my name is Alexandra Elvira Samarron Longorio. I am a research coordinator at the Center for Health Equity Research. And I am also a co-lead in the organizing of the Furnace First campaign, which is sponsored by the Center for Health, oh, the Southwest Health Equity Research Collaborative um, Initiative, which is a center inside the Center for Health Equity Research. It's a very confusing thing, but just know that this event is sponsored by the Southwest Health Equity Research Collaborative. And really this is an intention to build a space where we can um, find a place of, of community and also find a place where we all understand what the role of research but also community grounded research um, is. And so really understand how communities create knowledge, how communities find ways to be healthy and to find well being, um, despite living under conditions of inequity or injustice, and how research can also play an important role in advancing health fairness or justice in our communities. And so here today, we have this event called the Health Justice Futures because we want to collectively all together um, think of creative ways of how do we actually reach health in our lives? How do we find well-being? And so in short, Health, we want to introduce this definition of health justice 
as being the result of communities having the resources, social and political power to live well in balance and in a world free of structured biases and inequities. And so health justice really calls all of us to take action and really listen to the lived experiences of communities and prioritize a collective participation in what the future of our well being can look like. Here are some resources that we can also email you if you want to learn more about what health justice is. But first of all, before we get to Cody, I want to all of us engage in a conversation so that we could really understand. Um, everything that we need to understand when it comes to disability. So first of all, I want to ask all of you either, and I welcome you to please unmute yourselves or write it in the chat, really to answer this question, in our society, what is considered a normal body? How do we think as a normal body sounding like, looking like, moving, behaving. So I'm just going to open it up for you all to tell me. And again, I welcome you to unmute yourself. And also, I just want to encourage everybody, if you feel, if you feel comfortable um, with turning your camera on so that we can better engage with you. I know that there are limitations with doing these kinds of events um, via Zoom. But if you could um, show us your beautiful faces, that would be really great. <laughs> um, but yes, please, uh, I just want to open it up for you to answer the question on the screen. So Alison Lurash, is saying thin and white. Yes, yes, I agree. Who else? Who else is gonna be brave? I can stay in silence, don't worry. <laughs> who, else, who else do we think as normal bodies? Do we all have normal bodies? Abled bodies, yes. I know I don't have a normal body. There's always something falling apart with, with my... <laughs> Able to walk, to run. Kelly Lorilla saying someone with all their functioning limbs, moving without a wheelchair or assistance, English speaking, yes. Different cultural perspectives define what is considered a normal healthy body, yes. Yes, and I want to cisgendered, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. In summary, when we think about normal bodies, moving with, without sounds and pains, yes. Um, when we think of normal bodies, we tend to think of what's dominant. And what's dominant in our society is a body who looks white, who is heteronormative, who's not loud, who doesn't have any mental health issues that make make them uh, non-functional. And so with this, I want to bring a definition of what ableism means. And um, ableism here means the discrimination of people with disabilities based on the belief that typical, typical abilities are superior. And so when we say that there is such a thing as a normal body, we think that some bodies are less than, and some bodies are superior. And that is very dangerous because ableism, like racism and sexism, labels entire groups of people as less than, 
and includes harmful stereotypes, generalizations of people with disabilities. And I wanna take it a step further to think about how ableism creates structures that we constantly interact with that push people with disabilities out. Um, this could be any kind, like when we go to work, what, how does the office look like? Um, so here, I want to bring a definition of disability justice. And this is a term that was created by um, disability justice organizers. And here are the words of disability justice community organizer, Patty Byrne, um, who is the co-founder and executive director of Sins Invalid. If you don't know about Sins Invalid, I highly recommend you um, visit their website, look at their work. And basically she says, all bodies are unique and essential, that all, all bodies have strengths and needs that must be met. We know that we are powerful, not despite the complexities of our bodies, but because of them. We understand that all bodies are caught in these bindings of ability, race, gender, sexuality, class, nation, state, and imperialism, and that you cannot separate them. And so our bodies, our identities are in, intersectional in, in summary. So there are different layers to, our, to who we are. And so disability justice offer, offers us a framework of fairness or justice um, that was created by queer and trans women of color to understand disability not as an individual impairment, circumstance, or diagnosis, but instead, instead question the systems that create disabling environments. So here, it's not that we're saying that our bodies um, incapacitate us, but actually the structures that we engage with daily create disabling environments that are inaccessible, um, that create living conditions for communities um, with disabilities that are very exclusionary and oppressive. And so now I have another question for you. Again, I hope you're brave um, and unmute yourself uh, or write your response in the chat. What does care mean to you after all of our conversation regarding disability justice, um, ableism? In your life, when you think of your life and the people around you, what does care mean to you? Kindness. Kindness, is that what I heard? Yes. Yes. What else? Mm. Friends, family, and specialists. Yes, friends, family, specialists. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, for me, definitely friends, family, and my my chihuahua <laughs> he up with me, especially when I'm sad. He knows when I'm sad. Yeah. What else? What does care mean to you? Um, for me, just going off of supportive uh, relationships that I have, it's knowing that people think of me by calling me, they text me, uh, they'll write, write letters to me, I'll get stuff in the mail. So to me, that shows care about my well-being. Yes, yes. <clears throat> so I asked this question because we're going to engage in a little activity um, if you thought you were coming in and just stare at your screen tonight, um, <laughs> you were wrong. <laughs> so I'm going to put you to work if that's okay. Um, but basically, I asked the question of 
what care means to you because um, for a lot of communities who cannot rely on social services provided per se by the government have been very creative at, cre at creating communities of care. Um, for instance, a big example that I can give you is if we think of the pandemic last year um, and how the government was providing a lot of stimulus checks for a lot of people. But if you are undocumented, you could not access any of that funding. And so a lot of community groups started organizing and coming together to fundraise and create stimulus checks for undocumented people. And so care is not necessarily something that everyone can access, but a lot of communities have reimagined care in a different way um, that it's more collective. And I bring the work of Leah Lakshmi here, who's also a queer disabled um, uh, disability justice organizer who says, what does it mean to shift our ideas of access and care um, from an individual shore or an unfortunate cost of having an unfortunate body to a collective responsibility that's maybe even deeply joyful. So for instance, if um, like in my, I can think of my case, I uh, had COVID four weeks ago. I couldn't get out of my house and it was deeply powerful to have a friend of mine bring me sweet bread, pan dulce. She brought pan dulce and left it on the doorstep and I just felt loved and cared for. And so right now we all are going to engage in a little activity, but before I go on, anyone has questions so far? I know I've thrown at, uh, a lot of things at you. Comments, are you lost? <laughs> I have questions, but I think um I don't know if you read them, but there was people in the chat talking about oh, yeah. what care meant to them. Yeah, sorry, I missed that. I know it's hard to monitor the chat. The Thank thing. you. Okay. Oh yeah, so people said support, helping each other, emotional support, access to resources, um, having uh, daily needs met, being there for others. Yes. I love that. So now I'm going to ask you to grab pen and paper if you have that available, or if you don't really feel like writing or drawing or doing anything, um, make a, take a moment and make a mental note of if you were to create a community of care. And, you know, as I introduce the work of Leah Lakshmi, she calls them care webs. If you think about you, about your community and something that is needed within that community, what would that care web look like? And in the screen, you kind of see this care web and some questions that could help you in thinking about the components of all the things that you're gonna need in putting together this care web. And so for instance, an and I think a very important question when you're creating this care web is thinking about what is the goal of your care web? Maybe the goal is to find healing through, through the arts within your community. Okay, so to do that, what will, would your care web look like? Who would be involved? What will be the care needed? What tools are you gonna need? So I'm going to leave this screen open, but here's kind of the question that I want, I want you to answer. Like if you have pen and paper, you can draw it, you can write it, or you can even write it in the chat or just make a mental note. Um, 
when you think of your immediate or chosen family and community, what would a care web look like for you? And you can list all the characteristics, values, languages, knowledge, goals, best practices. So I'm gonna give you maybe like five minutes to come up with your care web. And I'm, I'm going to open it up and ask for two people to share their care web with us. If I don't have any, anyone who's volunteering, I might volunteer you. Um, so I'll give you five minutes. Okay, if you're close to wrapping it up, um, adding the last details to your care web. Okay, so who's gonna be, who can um, present to us their care web? What did you come up with? <laughs> There we go. Uh, what my what my carries for me is my friends, family, and doctors and teachers, and the tools are car, art supplies, and money. Yes. Oh yes. I love that art supplies and money. We need money. <laughs> hmm? It's sad. We need money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How are we gonna buy our art supplies if we don't have money? Is there anyone else who would like to share their care web? Thank you, Cody. Welcome.
I think we're all ready to go Mimi's, huh? We're ready to go <laughs> Mimi's and eat. <laughs> I'm gonna pick on somebody. I know some names here. <laughs> Let's see. Josue, are you there? Yes, I'm here. <laughs> Josue, what your care web looks like. Uh, my care web looks like uh, BIPOC, LGBTQ folks, uh, money, money, money. <laughs> um, in order to have fun, I mentioned like eating together and yes. convivir for the sake of convening and gathering. Mm -hmm. Mentioned uh, need needs based also uh, part of the question. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. I love that convivir. Con I guess in English it's convive to convive. I've never heard of that before. But and I think with the pandemic, it's been so hard to do that. Come together with other people and just be together and enjoy each other. Um, but finding new ways, going out for walks or just hanging out in the patio. Um, and food is such an important um, tool or vehicle to build connections and relationships. Um, why don't we do one last person? Thank you, Josue. Sorry to put you on the spot. De nada, todo bien. Anyone else? I drew a little picture. Oh, show it to us. You can see it. Oh, I couldn't even stop sharing. Let's see. I can see it. But that's like me, and then surrounded by my family and friends. And I also put coming together for food and family kind of as that fun aspect mm -hmm. and like supporting each other's goals and when those goals end up going positively or like going through the ups and downs of your goals and like accepting each other in your care web. Yes. Wait, show us the care web. <laughs> oh, nice. Ah, that's little Alexandra in the middle. <laughs> um, okay. <clears throat> Ooh, my screens are just going crazy. So sorry, everyone. But maybe, okay, so now that we kind of understand um, or have these non-traditional or non-dominant way of thinking about care, um, I just want to open it up for any last comments or questions before we go into a short break. Um, and then we just kind of hear more about Cody and his work and all the beautiful stuff that he creates. But I just want to open it up if anyone has any questions um, as of now. Everyone feels good? Yeah, Yumi, Yumi has her hand raised. <laughs> oh, sorry. No, that's no, okay. I had just a comment about the Alexandra's, um, you know, I don't remember how she phrased it, but then on my chart, I said, you know, be able to having good days, also bad days, but I'm okay. <laughs> Especially throughout the COVID, I think it's important that we can have bad days, but we have someone to support you or connect, or have, you know, be there for you. So those are important part. And I just wanted to point it out. I like that part, Alexandra. Yes, I, I agree. I think allowing ourselves to have bad days and recognize that it's not, <laughs> uh, yeah, our bodies are, are all these different things. And, and thank you for bringing that up, Yumi. Any other comments, things, or reflections that people have? Yeah. 
Yeah, I could share mine really quick. I know that I don't want to hold uh, people from break, but it kind of, oops, it kind of reflects what everybody was saying about food. Um, but for many indigenous people, food is also connected to um, prayers and ceremonies and getting together. So everybody shows up um, to show that they care for somebody who is having, you know, why the person for which they're having the ceremony for. Um, that's how we express care for one another. Everybody pitches in to bring food. Um, if what needs to be chopped for the ceremony, somebody is delegated to do that. So it's a communal effort and it's a man, like a visual manifestation of that care network. Thank you, Carm. Thank you so much. Okay. Well, now let's take a five minute break. If anyone needs to go use the bathroom, grab some dinner, grab a snack, um, feel free to do that. And then we'll come back and come back to Cody's presentation. Thank you, everyone.
Okay, we'll get ready in just a minute. And Cody, I have your slides on the screen. Are you able to see yep. them? Yep, yep, I, I saw it all right. Okay, awesome. Okay, so maybe we should get back to it. <laughs> so Cody, um, I'm gonna turn the mic to you, but I want to introduce everyone um, to Cody Kelly. He is a visual artist, like I mentioned, from part of a community organization in Tucson, Arizona. Cody, we are so grateful um, for your time and sharing with, with us your work. So I'm gonna give you the mic now. All right. Hi, my name is Cody Kelly. Um, I'm a truly confident person and also a hardworking person. Um, I'm, first of all, my diagnostics are both autism and disorganized schizophrenia. Um, I first off has went into treatment to behavioral health at Brand Healthcare in 2013, just for my recovery. And in 2017, I came to Artworks, spring of 2017. So I worked hard for my detailing with pencils, markers, and acrylic paint. And I have my reference recreation images from magazines, books, and other reference sources like the internet. And I also create art pieces of objects and landscapes. And I have an excellent sense of perspective, detail, and shadowing. So these are the pictures below on my below me. This is the one where I went to Hammond and Strumming on the left side. The middle side is my friends at Artworks. And my right side is where I went to the YMCA to exercise with dad. All right, next slide, please. All right, so these are, this is We Are People, right? which is done on acrylic on canvas. The reason I've done this painting is because I support diversity, which after Black Lives Matter in 2020, I did those things that I made some, made some artwork for people with different cultures and race. But like us and different people, we're all people. Okay, next slide, please. So, this is my artwork that I took dogs out for a walk. This is Star the Samoid and Sandy the Poodle. Um, I created those this artwork because both of my dogs have passed away. Right back in the 2000s, Star passed away in uh, 2001 and Sandy in 2007. Um, so I made these artwork when I took dogs out for a walk at the Desert Tree Nursery and where I live at the Picture Ox area. Next slide, please. So this is the Boca Burger, which is done in collage on canvas. One thing I can tell you about Boca Burger is it is a veggie protein burger that I bought from grocery stores and those veggie burgers can be made of soy protein, maybe beans, tomatoes, onions, you name it. Um, I cook those veggie patties because they are healthy alternative besides the um, meat burgers. And these are really delicious, delicious healthy alternatives. So yeah. 
Okay, next slide, please. Now this here is going hiking at Catalina State Park, which is done on graphite and charcoal on paper. I did visualize it very clearly, which I've done a pretty good job of making that art. Um, these are the Santa Catalina Mountains and I made the saguaro cactus that, that made these shadowy, shadowy perspectives and I made a hiking trail of perspective and you can see those bushes that I've done by these graphite and charcoal strokes. And this is a way of enjoying nature. Okay. Well, next slide, please. Okay. All right, this is the train. I picked this artwork because I, I had a magazine that has a train and I pictured it that has reference and, uh, man, I'm running out of speech thoughts. Okay. Because I like trains and um, that's a toy train that I like that, that I colored it in and made some lots of details onto, onto my paper, colored pencil and marker on paper and I've done well on those. Okay, next slide please. Now this is Sawara National Park West, which is mixed media on canvas. <clears throat> so I visualized the um, National Park scene, horrific views. That's the Wasson Peak, which you can see that's the tall mountain. Um, and right there you can see the Sawara cactus and other plants. And oh, you can see those desert animals, just a teeny tiny bit that I made. Um, and I made some scenific background details on the mountains, which has a scenific views and full of beautifulness. All right, next slide. All right, so Artworks is definitely an outreach program at the UFA Sonoran Center for Excellence in Disabilities within the, the, the Department of Family and Community Medicine. It promotes community and mutual learning through creative and expressive art interacting between adults with IDD and UFA students. Together, we create a safe space for expression, connection, and growth for the artists like us, students, and community. Mutual respect and learning is the center of every activity at Artworks. All members are encouraged to practice their strengths and talents. Thank you, Cody. <clears throat> Thanks for sharing all your work. Um, <laughs> and we'll open it up for questions. Yes, really good job. Thank you so much. Um, We'll open it up for questions and discussions, uh, but Yumi, um, I wanted to see if you wanted to say anything. Guess what? Cody is fantastic, right? So he, he really represented our art studio and what we do. And he also advocate, you know, that's part of his work that he also teach the university student going into the classrooms and he delivered the message really clearly. And then also, uh, yes, Cody, perfect. <laughs> so I just am uh, very excited to have him as our artist and he's a fantastic uh, gardener too. So him and his parents, right. mom are making a beautiful vegetable garden in our backyard. So it's part of our seasonal product or project. And um, we have the website and other link and we have Facebook. So please visit us and just send us an email if you like to connect more. 
And if you have questions too, we love to collaborate. We love to travel. We exchange arts and other things. So let us know. Thank you. Thank you, Yumi and Cody. <clears throat> and I would like to open it up uh, for discussion and questions um, that any of you have for Cody. Any thoughts, questions about the pieces? I think that's my favorite. <laughs> Awesome. So this one is part of, you know, as a group, you know, someone talked about the group community aspects of art making. So during this time, we are as a collectively exploring um, loss and death and also grief. Yeah, so, yeah, so we talk about those and we shared our thoughts and experiences then we kind of summarized that in our visual format and we had an exhibition too and we have a conversation with university students. Um, Cody, you wanna say something about that more or? Um... Well, the reason I've done this artwork is for the part of the loss and grief and death of those someone or some pet you cared about. Um, I do these couple of dogs that have been part in my life when from my kid to teen years. Um, let's see. Uh, because they'll always be in my heart and all of our hearts when they're safe up in heaven. So um, I'm glad those dogs have been our com haven't been my companions for me that, that I like getting along with. So that's that. Yeah, thank you, Cody. Having the art, you know, media as part of the center of a conversation, some topics may not be easy to explain or discuss or <laughs> share, but then uh, having the art as a center of, you know, conversation, we were able to kind of, you know, have a different discussion that we may not share otherwise. So it was a, a very nice project and um, the university students also appreciated that opportunity and sharing. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions, comments? All right. Cody, I guess I was wondering um, okay. if you could tell us why, why, why do you do you do art, and why is art important to your life? Why is it important to express my feelings, even though that I have a couple of diagnoses with both developmental disabilities and mental illness. Um, I've done this just to express my feelings for, for, um, uh, to show them how I feel and to understand why artwork, artwork means to me. So, so artwork gives me confidence and gives me much hard working and communicate through my expression of every masterpiece. Thank you. Yes, I, I agree. I think that art is such a necessary vehicle to find ways to communicate with each other and really express um, in a more visceral or more bodily way <laughs> Um, our daily lives, what our realities look like, um, and really build a sense of community and relationships. Um, anything else, any other 
uh, anyone has any questions for Cody? Well, Sarah, really, that's a question already. Oh, there you go. Can you? Sarah Clint is asking, Cody, how did you find the art group that you're working with? Uh, how to find the art group I'm working with. I found the art group with other developmental disabilities that I make friends with. Um, you know, first of all, when I was at Behavioral Health, I used to join Art Awakenings for like two and a half years until I graduated Art Awakenings and then joined Artworks through my DDD. And I really make friends through do artworks from the green, the red, the pink, and the office studios, which is located at the UFA next to the parking garage. Um, we did do our we do our assignments together. Um, we work on other students and teachers and being supportive with other developmental disability peers, and we also look out for each other. I love that, I love that. It sounds, Cody, that you found our works, but more through this uh, community <laughs> or network of friends and and being able to do art together with other people and looking after each other that's <laughs> beautiful yeah any questions oh alejandro torres <laughs> oh my god hello oh jeez <laughs> hi thank you hi. so much for, for all the work put into this um, Alexandra, Cody, and everyone else. Um, I really like the sandwich one, by the way. That was my favorite. Um, I would like to ask uh, Cody if, uh, I'm actually also currently in Tucson, and I was wondering um, if there's any like uh, implementations uh, around immigrate, immigrant folks uh, in disabilities in the program that you're in. Uh, currently, or if you know anything of that um, avenue, uh, that would be very helpful. Or if you can point me out to any leads or how I can get connected. Hmm. I can get connected. Let's see. <laughs> that is a tough question, I know. Mm. <clears throat> You wanted me to take it, <laughs> Cody, or so we don't have a specific program. Okay. But then we are always open, right, Cody? We are always wanting to We're collaborate. Yeah. <laughs> so if you know any groups, we will make it happen. Yeah. So let us know if we have partners. And I think. Uh, Tucson Museum of Art had some program there for the migrant uh, youth. I think it's a very extensive one with the poetry and art and which exhibition is always under the uh, ground floor. And, but we haven't collaborated, but we are very interested if you have any partner or even with distance with Zoom, we can do that. So let us know. Reach out to Cody, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Alex. Any any other questions, thoughts? Yeah, I I have a question for Cody. So okay. um, I think Yumi had shared this um, that you are doing gardening with your mom. You have a garden in your yard, right? Do you um do you um, do you create art for your garden? Do you have art in the garden or how do you, do you mix the two, like doing your art and gardening at the same time? Um, I've done some landscape gardening, but um, my parents used to own a tree nursery business called Sun Valley Growers. Right now they retired. Um, 
I used to work at Sun Valley Growers, but right now I've done some yard work. Um, there is, well, I did do some landscape artwork that I did to express myself. I know that I've done like Bob Ross and other things like that. But yeah, I did make some garden art, which is like this past January um, during my art class with Elizabeth. And um, yeah, I did made some landscaping art experience that I create just to express and communicate with myself and others around me. Thank you, Cody. That's so cool. All right. I see. Oh, I thought I saw Samantha Sabo. <laughs> you had your hand up. Did you want to say something? Was I that an accident? <laughs> no. Well, I'm here with my son and he's 10 and he loves art, but he's shy. Hmm. Um, so I'm going to ask his question um, if that's okay. Sure. He was, yeah, he was curious about how you, um, like any advice for a, a new artist or a young artist, any, any advice that you would have to get started or get going? Get starting, get going. Um, what I recommend for young artists. What I recommend for young artists is to keep up the good work by using some more art, even though it's either art or cartooning or any other stuff of the media that he would really like. So it's good for him to keep up the good work. Thanks. Cartooning is a big deal. He makes a lot of cartoons. So that's super cool <laughs> that you said that. He's on the right track, it sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, it's from Kelly. Can you read that for me, Alexandra? Yes, of course. You're paying better attention to the chat than I'm, I'm paying attention to. So Kelly's asking, Cody, what media do you enjoy working with the most? Me enjoy working with. Drawing, painting, um, watercolor painting, that's another one. Um, it's also color pencil and marker coloring after drawing. Uh, I've done sculpting one time with my other teacher named Ted. That's it. Nice. Thank you. you know, the other thing I was thinking, um, and Yumi, I know you brought this point um, to us the other day, but if you, uh, Cody, if you have any ideas, or Yumi as well, um, on saying something about um, who can access art or who is art for? For, for, if that makes sense. I know you, we had a conversation about this because sometimes in the quote unquote traditional form, we think of art or the people who engage in art as having very specific uh, realities or bodies like we talked about, but really thinking about how art can be part of all of our lives. And, and so Yumi or Cody, if you had any thoughts about, about accessing art and what that means. Accessing art. Let me share my shameful experience then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm a trained mover, but I'm not a visual artist, although I'm a director of the art studio. So that painting, a drawing, is uh, such a 
uh, fear for me. So if I, if someone tell me you need to draw this, or let's do a drawing project, I would flee. I don't know what to do it. So it took me a long while. I'm still not comfortable, but I forced myself in the class, a group that do it together step by step. So I kind of need to extend my vocabulary that I feel comfortable so I can do free drawing of a bit because I just self-doubt what I'm doing is wrong, but even the color that I'm picking is not right. And it's always getting into brownish, right? Like <laughs> very not pure, um, non-beautiful colors. So my imagination and what comes out in my paper can be different. But if I work with Cody together, he can guide me to, I have visualized this, then, um, you know, would you help me to do this and that? So I have a nice art community that who can teach me doing so. That is really grateful that I need to be open to my fear. At the same time, I have a community that we can do together. So I'm very grateful for that. And so I think it's similar to movement or music too, that sometimes you may have one strength of whatever the art forms, but, you know, opening up your fears, it'd be okay if you have a community that can share without judgment. And um, we promote that kind of interaction with even non artist, you know, to join our group so we can try things out. Mm -hmm. And that's the one of the access to it, right? Like with my head, I'm not an artist, so I cannot do it. No, but once you get started, then you can enjoy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially whenever whenever I overcome my fears by doing some arts, then um feel way to it's I know I say a lot of expressing myself around here. I did some, lots of artwork in a way to show what artwork I've done and show what I've done for. Thank you both Yumi and Cody. And I think just bringing that point that art can be collaborative. We often think of art as being an uh, individual lonely activity but in reality the power of communities coming together creating art to make their realities visible um, is so vital especially in in communities finding ways to survive and finding ways to thrive there is so much power in being able to create art in community um, and find affirmation um, and again, going back to that conversation of thinking about our communities of care, our care webs, um, we find affirmation in that act of relationship building, of seeing ourselves through the eyes of others and what we create together. And so that's kind of the idea that we wanted to accomplish in thinking about um, what the health justice future would look like in the context of disability. But I wanna uh, ask if anyone has any last thoughts. Oh, Michael saying, as someone with an art background, there is such healing in finding community to support each other with creative works without judgment. Yes, yes. Thank you, Michael. If there's oh, Sandra, we also have one question from Lee. Oh, yes. Roll <laughs> back. Cody, there's a question for you. Yeah, I already noticed. Lee is asking, have you worked with any particular tribal communities to promote artworks with tribal members with disabilities? Uh, no, I haven't even worked with tribal members. I did look up on Google Maps for other tribe, any Native American reservations, especially many of them are in Arizona. Um, but I'm pretty sure that there may be like a, this, there may be like some tribal large, such as the Navajo Nation and there will, there may be some 
Navajo tramps doing some art, including a disability one. So mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that Native Americans also done their artwork too. Thank you. Um, okay, well, if, are there any last reflections you all have? Um, any last questions? No. Oh, Sam. No. Okay. I I was just curious about um, um, Cody and and Yumi how how you all kept that spirit and connection during COVID times. Did you use um, Zoom or did you how did you do that? Um, I use Zoom a lot when I'm staying in quarantine. Um, I did a lot of things. You know, I did a lot of things, then I've done some art during like the pandemic and by taking those classes, including Ted's watercolor class. But I also have like a whole big yard and backyard around my mobile home. So I get plenty of exercise and also going on a nutritious diet. And, um, and whenever we have tough times during the pandemic I talk to the my friends and teachers at zoom meeting and artworks and also talk to my parents too about how I missed going through my regular routines so that's the way how we're communicating and hopefully that tough times will be over so that's about it. Those are good strategies. I know someone asked, oh, Sarah, you said, I would love to see this type of art community in Flagstaff. And yes, there, there's the Hoshoni Foundation in Flagstaff who connect with um, people with disabilities and come together and do really amazing artwork. Um, so please check them out in social media and, and their website. Um, let's see, but if... Yeah, they are wonderful. We come and travel and share some shows together with the uh, gallery. Yeah, so they are fantastic folks. Thank you, Yumi. So any last... Uh, I'm gonna pull up something on the screen, but if are there any last comments, thoughts before we end our evening together? Uh, everyone's ready to roll. I will. I just wanted to verbalize a compliment to Cody. I loved. Loved every aspect of your work, the detail, the color, uh, the subject, the topics that you cover. Um, I actually had to turn off my screen for a bit because I did get a little teary eyed when I saw the, the um, drawing that you did of your pets, because pets are just so foundational and so important to me in my life. And I've lost a couple. I know, I know how much that hurts. So um I think, you know, that's the connective power of art. Like, I feel like I can connect with you and talk to you about how, what that experience is like and how important pets are to our well being. And so I just wanted to say, keep going, keep making art. Um, what you contribute to the world is, is really powerful and it's really beautiful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, everybody, we, we are very grateful that you all joined us. We're going to let you go early, but before you go, um, there are a few things we would like to ask from you. Uh, we really want to learn um, your thoughts about today's session. Um, and so please, if you can visit the link, um, maybe if Alex or Carm, if you could 
post the link in the chat to access the evaluation. It's a short survey just so that we can learn um, what you thought about today's event. And then you can also use the QR code with your phone, just take a picture. It'll take you directly to the survey. Um, and also, if you would like to connect with us, with any of the organizers um, of the Fairness First campaign, uh, please visit us in social media, uh, visit our website so that you learned our other initiatives. Um, we have a podcast, we have a blog, um, and really we just want to imagine new ways of learning from each other, of actually research being the, something that is grounded in community and something that it's um, tangible that can create change and, cre and like think of ways to find well-being for all different communities. Um, and I just wanna thank you everyone uh, I know I had you for a while and asked to interact with me <laughs> a lot, um, but I hope that we were able to um, engage in conversation about what care means in our lives um, and that there's not such a thing as a normal body. Um, and also something else, you know, I feel like sometimes when I think of uh, this ability, it's a temporal thing. Um, we all are going to get sick and our bodies are going to change. Uh, and we all will be in need of care at any point of our lives. And so always thinking about what this ability justice can mean in our lives and how we can build relationships that affirm us, that love us, that are sustainable. Um, and so thank you all for joining us and I hope you get a good dinner, get good sleep, make some tea with honey. And <laughs> if no one has anything else to say, I'll let you all go, but thank you so much for joining us. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Good night. Good night. Cody, can you stay with us? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a quarter to seven, by the way. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we finished early because, um, you know, remember we were going to have that other speaker. Um, but he couldn't join us anymore. So we have time left, left, left over. So I, um, yeah, we were just gonna talk about how, how did everybody feel about the event? Um, and I think I stopped the recording. I hope I did. Um, yeah, you did. Okay. <laughs>